cool off. I've been running some drills with a Beretta. It's uh, middle toward the end of May and it's already hot even here in North Florida and yellow flies are abundant and they're a pain in the butt so while I'm cooling off I'm gonna make this video the subject matter is training on your worst day most people that I train concealed weapons classes um, they want days when the temperature's right, no rain in the forecast, all sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns. Some of the real life lessons I've learned. Criminals do not attack you when you're the strongest. They attack you when they perceive a weakness they can exploit. That's why even at our worst, under the worst conditions, starting behind the curve, starting with every disadvantage, that's when we have to train. That's what we have to train for because that's when an attack is likely to occur. <clears throat> During a night fire course that I took probably about eight, nine years ago, I had worked a midnight shift and got up that afternoon to work it. Been up all night, went to take the class on a Saturday, I believe it was. And before we got on the range to shoot our qualifications, we had to sit through about five hours worth of classroom training. I was tired. I was physically fatigued. It had not been an easy night at work before. No way I could have gotten that night off and got a good night's sleep and went to this class. My former department simply couldn't accommodate that. Went out and did that. Because of the nature of the class and it being on an outdoor range, there was no way to dim the lights. We had to wait until it began getting dark to begin our actual exercises. So now you're tired, it's hot, even with it getting dark it wasn't cooling off any. And that was what I had to overcome. Were my groups the tight little groups that you'd normally see when I shoot them? <laughs> no way. But all 48 of 48 shots were on the target. Center mass would have been uh, good hits. Hits capable of incapacitating an assailant. Also, because of the nature of this course, I was firing the gun one-handed. Uh, for this particular class at the time I was using a 4006 Smith & Wesson traditional double action, single action, semi-automatic was a gun that I have shot very well in the past we had a degree of difficulty because now I'm drawing and firing it with one hand simulating real life scenarios in my right hand, because I'm left-handed, I had a flashlight, full-size mag light. A 
when we train, we don't want to train just in fair weather when the temperature is not too hot, not too cold. We want to train ideally to simulate real world conditions. That means uh, you get off work, you're tired, you have the opportunity to go to the range for an hour to get in some practice time, take it. Because you're going to be surprised what difference that fatigue factor makes. If you have a chance to train doing low light shooting or night fire, that would be an asset to you. Train one handed, strong handed and weak handed because you may have to draw your gun while you're trying to get into your car while you're trying to get in your front door you may have your keys in one hand you may be carrying a package all sorts of scenarios can come up but I can assure you of this from experience you are not going to be attacked on your best day get up drink coffee read the newspaper have breakfast. All right, now we're ready. Come and break into my house now. <laughs> really. That's as silly as me deer hunting and expecting the deer to say, well, he slept in tonight. We'll come see him this afternoon. That's why criminal break into houses when it's dark because they have you at a disadvantage to it being daylight. Train with what you may have available to you. I can go and put on a race rig and get out and shoot IPSC targets and IDPA targets and whatever else all day long. And that's well and good. I'm at least getting in the trigger time and improving my gun handling skills. But that full size gun may not be the one that I have with me when the real world comes knocking. It may be that little short barreled 38 rides in my pocket, it may be on my ankle. Less accessible than the open carried quick draw rig. Now if your lifestyle dictates you can do that all the time by all means I encourage carrying a full size firearm. Um, but the truth of the matter is probably not going to happen. Criminals tend to exploit weaknesses. They, uh, they're not going to come and say, wait a minute, this guy's house is like Fort Knox. <laughs> uh, they're going to go down the road and find somebody's house that's wide open. They're looking for an easy target. They're looking for low risk, high reward. Somebody robs me, he's not going to get a big reward. He's going to take a high risk. I'm not worth somebody jumping on. simple way it is. You know, I encourage people to train in all conditions, particularly conditions you may find yourself in. If you're a beach bum, maybe an idea, hey, let me see how long I can deploy my handgun from wherever it stays whenever I'm in my speedo. Uh, because you may not be deploying it from its holster. It may be in a bag somewhere. You, know, you may need to figure out how fast you can get your rifle or shotgun out of the trunk of a car and get it into action. You may be a 
somebody like me that favors a pickup truck. See how long it takes for you to get your rifle or your shotgun into play from that. Be it in the back window, be it behind the seat, be it laying on the seat. Those are real world conditions and real world things you need to accommodate. Maybe then you need to change your strategies. Maybe it requires a lifestyle change. For the average person in the United States anymore, carrying a gun requires a lifestyle change. First thing, in most places you have to go through all the paperwork and get a permit to carry. In many states they require training, documented training, to meet those requirements to obtain a permit. Then we get into actually carrying the firearm itself and that depends on which gun you're going to use. It also may dictate which places you go. Uh, in Florida, for instance, it's illegal to carry a gun in a bar. If you're the guy that likes to tip one back, leave the damn thing at home. This is not just limited to firearms training. It's also had to deal with edged weapons, improvised weapons, martial arts, your most powerful weapon is going to be your brain and your will to survive. So, you need to look at life. You need to look at your lifestyle and figure out what's going to work for you. In some places, hey, you may be forbidden to carry a firearm or it's impossible to carry a firearm. It's when you look at alternative methods. Maybe it requires you to take some form of martial arts training. Maybe it requires you to carry an edged weapon. May require you to now gain knowledge of what's around you that can be used in a improvised manner as a weapon. Fire extinguisher is a wonderful thing. I don't know that any libtard, uh, communist or socialist that's trying to outlaw fire extinguishers right now. At close range you can discharge it into somebody's face and if need be you can work them over with it. Um, Umbrella or walking cane works wonders. Um, so, train for your worst case scenarios. Train for the absolute worst thing that you might get into under the absolute worst circumstances you could find yourself in. Train with your firearms, train with whatever else you may have available to you. Never give up the fight. Always keep in your mind that you're fighting to survive the encounter. If you lose, you die. Simple matter of fact. Later on, 